Hello and welcome to Serial Tech's series on SAS and SATA basics and Serial Tech Bus Expert basics. In the last few sections we covered the basics of the Serial ATA protocol including primitives, OOB, frame transmission, type of frames and commands. In this section we'll be starting on the SAS protocol. My name is Matthew Hallberg, I'm the product manager over at Serial Tech and you can reach me at matt at serialtech.com. So let's get some general introductions to SAS. It's a serialized version of SCSI. In fact, SAS stands for Serial Attached SCSI. Communication is directly between an initiator and target, and it's a replacement for parallel SCSI. Um, and a little bit of background on, on SCSI. It was primarily used as a storage venue for servers, etc., due to its longer MTBF mean time between failure, failover rates, error reporting, and speeds over ATA and IDE. Uh, essentially, it was an on-demand 24-7 device uh, or bus, whereas Serial ATA, while cheaper, isn't something that you want to run for a long time in a row. Uh, it replaced parallel SCSI for several reasons, including higher data rates because of uh, clock skewing over a parallel interface, and it does not require terminations. It can also have up to 65,535 devices with the use of expanders, which means it can be a really, really, really large storage network. It's a full duplex protocol, which means traffic can flow in both directions simultaneously, and it's a peer-to-peer -peer relationship, whereas Serial ATA is parent-child. All the devices use a worldwide name as our identifier, and no worldwide names can be the same. The protocol itself is built up of several layers. The physical layer, file layer, link layer, transport layer, and application layer. It consists of three primary transport protocols, SMP, SSP, and STP. SMP is for Serial Management Protocol. Its primary use is for expanders and storage fabrics. SSP is Serial SCSI Protocol. This is used for sending commands and their respective responses. The STP is Serial Tunneling Protocol. This is used for talking to SATA devices in a SAS environment, which kind of leads to just a, a side point that SAS includes SATA in its storage environment. So this, what you'll see in a storage network is probably you'll have uh, your nearline storage, which will be your SAS drives, and your farline storage, which is generally the long-term storage where you access it every so often, which is going to be primarily consisting of Serial ATA. The cost per gigabit or gigabyte uh, between Serial ATA and SAS is, I would say, it's not substantial, but it's enough for there to be a difference between the two. There are several types of devices in SAS, including HBAs, which are host bus adapters, HDDs, SSDs, tape drives, expanders which are similar to a network switch. They allow hosts and other expanders the ability to access more drives and more expanders across them. Also, SAS introduces a wide port concept. Essentially, this is a usage of two or more files together as a single address, which also um, gives you better, well, you could spread out a command across four links and so, or two links. And so you can have commands going out on one link, responses, and data coming out on others. And so um, at any time that you have a link that's busy, you can put data across another link. It also allows multiple connections at the same time, which increases availability and performance. The popular usage is four wide, which is how most HBAs and expanders are configured. There are a couple different versions of SAS. SAS 1.1, which is 3 gig. SAS 2.0, which is 6 gig. Uh, SAS 2.1, which is also 6 gig but with some extensions. And in the works is SAS 12 gig or SAS 3.0. These are the SAS concepts. So there's a concept of the open and closed connections. So SAS uses an open and closed relationship to more efficiently use a link. You send an open when you want to send something, i.e., a command frame or a data frame, and a close when you are finished. This allows the link to be accessed by other devices. So instead of like in Serial ATA, the host and the device have essentially a, 
uh, serial link and they just talk to each other and that's about it. This allows for other devices to talk to that device or other hosts to talk to that device. Um, there are credits needed for sending and receiving frames. So when an open is accepted, the recipient will send already primitives to allow the originator to send the data. The host will also send already primitives so that data can be sent back and forth. During transaction, if the device may send more already's if it wants to receive more data, or it'll close the connection until the originator device is ready to receive or send more data. Also in SAS is the um, is command queuing. Generally the software layer is going to assign tag values to each SSP command such that a device can have multiple outstanding commands and complete each command in any sequence. And the data is always sent when it is available which allows for overall command efficiency. Also there's a thing called SAS zoning. This allows expanders to be configured to privatize the network making some addresses unavailable to others essentially saying this group over here, this group of drives is for this department, this group of drives is for this department, and this group of drives can be used by both departments. So also similar to serial ATA, SAS is composed of primitives. So there are, uh, as a note, there are many subgroups for each primitive. So for example, an align has a line 0, a line 1, a line 2, and a line 3. Okay. So the first one is an ACK, and this is a frame acknowledgement, which means it's been approved. AIP, arbitration and process, which is used by expanders to report that a connection request has not yet been approved. Align, essentially used for clock management. A break is used to terminate and close a connection in an emergency. Broadcast is sent by expanders to tell other expanders that a change has occurred in its configuration. Close is used to close the connection and open it up to other resources. Credit block indicates that no more alreadys will be sent for this connection. Done normal means that the connection is being prepared to being closed. So essentially it's saying we're just about done here and pretty soon I'm going to close the connection. Done timeout means that the connection has timed out and needs to be closed. EOAF is end of open address frame. EOF is end of frame. Error is sent by expanders when they detect invalid D words. Hard reset is sent to force a device reset. MUX or MUX is used for multiplexing. NAC is also part of frame acknowledgement, which means denied. Notify enable spinup is used to tell a drive to spin up its media. Open accept is sent by the receiver of an open connection to say, okay, I accept your open. Open reject is to say, sorry, I'm not ready yet. Already is used as a credit for indicating the device is ready to receive a frame. SATA error is detected only if there is an error on a SATA link. SOAF is the start of an open address frame. SOF start of frame. Train. This is used during train SMW or speed negotiation window to establish the link at the highest supported settings between devices. And we'll cover that a little bit later in the training. So in terms of bringing the link up, there are several different processes required. Uh, there's a speed negotiation sequence, which includes the different speed negotiation windows or SNW. They're slightly different for SAS 1.1 versus SAS 2.0. Remember, SAS 1.1 is at 1.5 and 3 gig speeds, covered by SNW1 and SNW2. And SAS 2 includes SNW3 and train SNW. There's also an identify sequence. For complex environments, more information is needed about the topology. So there's a discovery sequence that goes out, essentially sending out SMP frames to find out what is out there and if there are any zones. So that ends this section on some of the introductory terms for SAS. Uh, our next section will be covering SAS speed negotiation. Thank you for your time.